We'll be talking about CSL in just a minute. Before we do, though, look at this idea of a Santa Claus rally. Does today's, you know, lend credence, if you like, to, to the, the hope of one? Well, hopefully we will see a Santa Claus rally, and the market's certainly on its way there today. We saw the market reaching a two-week high, $3.6 billion worth of stock being traded. Now, that doesn't seem a lot, but it's actually the average that we've seen traded in the month of November. So today, we're really coming in on average for this month so far. But that's down, of course, about 18% from last year's uh, numbers. If we have a look at our market, helped along by the fact that we did see an agreement in Greece. But if we have a look at volumes across the globe, they are quite light. In fact, in the U.S. session overnight, we saw the lightest uh, back from Thanksgiving volumes since 1996. So it's not just the Australian share market, which is suffering with those very light volumes. One of the things that we were watching during the Asian session today was the Shanghai Composite. We have a look at the Shanghai Composite, and this is the one-year chart of the Shanghai Composite. This is what it looks like. And we've actually seen the Shanghai Composite down by 1% today, and it's below a key uh, support area of 2,000 points. It's actually back at levels that we haven't seen since the global financial crisis. So down by 9.2% for 2012 so far. And I guess some concern given that it is a key driver of uh, what's happening in our mining space. In terms of our market, though, it was a good day. We saw a number of stocks reaching record highs in terms of 52-week highs as well as all-time record highs. CSL reached an all-time record high today. It's up about 60% in the past year. Perpetual also hitting a 52-week high. This is a stock that's up by 50% in the past year, so doing quite well. Horizon Oil, another good uh, performer, up 120% in the last year. And we also saw Crown as well as the Reject Shop hitting 52-week highs. So all in all, a light volume day, but a good one for the Aussie market. Talking about it not just being, I suppose, benchmarked against um, other big companies listed on the the S&P ASX 200, but benchmarked against its global peers, particularly off the back of this, this U.S. contract and, and just the sort of multiples we're seeing in terms of earnings. And this is truly a global company. About 90% of its revenue does come from offshore, so it's understandable why those comments are coming through. But CSL, a hugely successful story. They've seen very strong demand for their products throughout the globe, and that's despite some pretty anemic growth rates coming out globally and despite the European situation, we've seen European growth holding up as well some very positive earnings momentum and this has been a story that's been building and building in fact over the past five years if we average out the net profit growth it's 19 percent per year in terms of earnings per share growth we're looking at 21 percent per year they're looking at very strong demand for their products but not only strong demand for their existing products so i think it's exciting what csl has done in terms of its development pipeline it spends quite a substantial amount of cash in terms of research and development so not only does it focus on its current products and being able to uh, get them into markets and see strong growth rates there. It's always also looking towards um, the future and what potential products may come up there. So CSL, some very positive earnings momentum. The healthcare space is the best performing of the year so far. And that's because investors this year have been tied to two themes. One of those themes has been the high yielding story given that we have seen cash rates fall down. That's why it's been a good year for Telstra. And the other story that investors have liked are those companies that are growing earnings that have positive earnings momentum. And that's why the healthcare sector has been the best space this year, up by 38%, really driven by stocks like CSL and ResMed, which have increased earnings. And in the case of ResMed has also seen a record quarterly earnings coming through for the last few quarters. Get your thoughts on TATS closed up. I think it was about 2.8% today on the back of, uh, I suppose it's, it's, a, it's a win of sort, but it'll essentially be managing uh, South Australia's lottery business. And this is really a transition for TATS. It's gone from being pretty much a pokey company to a lottery type business. And of course, since we've seen the pokey license in Victoria expiring um, in August, there's been a big hole to fill. So it's going to fill that hole with lottery revenues. And lotteries are a good thing. They're long-term uh, licenses. It's a mon uh, pretty much a monopoly in terms of the state uh, lotteries and if we have a look it's very low capital expenditure it's very stable earnings as well however I think a bit of a question mark on the price that they paid for this license I mean it is a record in Australia in terms of the multiples that they're paying 427 million dollars mm -hmm. I think we were expecting to see a number more in between 300 to 350 million dollars so you could say that they've paid more than um, what we expected by around about uh, 100 
hundred million dollars, and that would have been based on about a net um, a net profit uh, from that lottery license of about twenty seven uh, mil. Uh, 21 million dollars per year and about unclaimed prizes of about two million dollars uh, per year so i guess it's a good thing that they are filling this gap that's being left by that victorian uh, gaming license which of course they're seeking compensation for but on the other hand it does look like they paid a pretty high price uh, for this south australian lottery license